Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Anna Tampieri, and my institute is ISTEC, devoted to research on ceramic material, ceramic and hybrid composite material, belonging to Italian National Research Council, and located in Faenza, near Bologna. Uh, my talk today will uh, focus on uh, uh, biohybrid composite for osteochondral regeneration, uh, with particular attention to uh, how nano confinement affects uh, uh, bioactivity. I would like, firstly, to answer to the question uh, proposed by Elisa in the in talk uh, before uh, why working at the, at the nanoscale? From the material point of view, uh, there are uh, some answers. Because nature uses nanotechnology, nanotechnological process, to build super smart materials optimized across the ages. Second, because structural confinement induces highly desirable and specific functional properties. And also because nanomaterials easily are able easily to hierarchically organize, to self-assemble, which is needed to mimic uh, native tissue. Um, in our uh, work, we follow a biomimetic approach, uh, and the aim was to repair bone and cartilage critical defects through template regeneration using an appropriate scaffold. It's well known that bone is a very complex uh, uh, material, it is a biohybrid composite, and it's characterized by a complex structure from the nano to the macro scale level. It's mainly formed by a mineral phase, an apatitic structure, and uh, an organic phase, mainly collagen type 1. Similarly, cartilage is a, a very complex material organized from the nano to the macro scale, and mainly constituted by collagen, proteoglycans, and glucosaminoglycans. So our aim was to try to develop a um, compositionally and morphologically graded scaffold to repair focal defects, osteochondral focal defects with a, a small, medium dimension. And the pushing idea was to, uh, to produce this scaffold uh, able to mimic uh, the complex uh, composition of the osteochondral region uh, to be inserted in the defects and exploiting the blooding from the subchondral bone um, to have the differentiation of mesenchymal cell passing through the scaffold and in contact with different uh, uh, messages from the scaffold, signals from the scaffolds, to induce uh, uh, differentiation in uh, uh, um, osteoblastic cell in the, sub, in the uh, uh, bony layer and uh, chondrocyte in the upper layer. Um, biomineralization uh, is a typical example of a nanotechnological process uh, um, that nature uses to, to, to produce, to build bone tissue. And uh, um, uh, during this process, uh, the uh, mineral phase is uh, confined, structurally confined by the organic template, which is collagen, which uh, in turn act uh, transferring at molecular level a lot of information at the mineral phase. Actually, during this process, uh, a lot of controlling mechanisms are active, which are able to affect the chemistry, the microstructure, the morphology of the final biohybrid composite. So we tried to reproduce this process, uh, exploiting the self-assembling ability of collagen fibers in function of pH variation, and to induce simultaneous nucleation of the mineral phase in physiological condition starting from collagen type 1 extracted from uh, um, horse tendon and uh, uh, inducing the nucleation of uh, the mineral phase, the apatitic mineral phase, in physiological condition. What we obtain uh, is a mineral phase 
as you can see um, in your, um, um, in your uh, right, um, with the mineral phase, which is uh, uh, really very similar to the uh, mineral phase of the natural bone. Actually, the collagen prevents the crystallization of hydrosiapatite, and uh, so it transfer, it, uh, is able to control the um, crystallization degree of the inorganic phase. Similarly, uh, by infrared analysis, we can, uh, we can see that uh, there is a spontaneous uh, uh, income of carbonate ion instead of phosphate in B position, which is uh, uh, typical of the newly formed bone. So we have also a chemical control. Um, it's well known that the, appetite, the human uh, natural appetite is uh, very far from the stoichiometric formula, and many ions uh, present in the environmental, uh, physiological environmental environment, uh, sorry, uh, enter in the structure of appetite, and sorry, and <laughs> sorry. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, the, those, the, the formula, uh, the final formula of a biomimetic appetite is uh, uh, what you can see in the back, in the bottom. And uh, um, this, uh, uh, those ions can enter in the structure since uh, the uh, low crystallinity and the uh, high, uh, high instability of this uh, biomimetic hydrosiapatite. Uh, if you look uh, more in detail at the um, microstructure of this uh, biohybrid composite, we can see that uh, the mineralized fiber has the nuclei completely, the nanonuclei of uh, uh, HA completely merged in the fiber. And by flat chamber, X ray flat chamber analysis, we can see that uh, the C axis of hydrosapatite are growing along the parallel, along the long axis of the fibers as occur in vivo. And uh, this is extremely important since uh, the AB axis of uh, HA are exposed to be um, um, available for osteocalcine. And so uh, the, the composite is, uh, has, is characterized by highly uh, high biomimetism and by high bioactivity. Um, we can also control uh, the, uh, during the mineralization the starting of the, the mineralization pin, the, the space uh, where the mineralization starts, which is, uh, which in human uh, case is uh, between, in the gap in between the collagen molecules. And so using uh, polyelectrolytes, a small amount of polyelectrolytes like magnesium, which is extremely important in the physiological environment, also in doping, HA, as I have shown you before. Uh, if we can control the, um, the attachment of the mineral phase in the gap, we have a disturbing effect, as you can see in this picture, of the um, um, structurization of the collagen secondary uh, secondary structure. So, uh, but uh, this uh, also prevent the detachment of the mineral phase, like in this image, and stabilize the structure of the biohybrid composite. Uh, in vitro tests show that uh, the cell uh, likes very much uh, this biohybrid composite. This some images of the cell that wrap completely the fibrous structure of the composite. Um, here we have uh, uh, an image showing the, in uh, blue the nuclei of the cell, in green the actin filaments. Then we had also hyaluronic acid in the cartilaginous layer to better mimic uh, the upper layer of the scaffold and uh, a cross-linking agent to stabilize the overall composite uh, in order to uh, control the degradation rate and uh, make it uh, uh, more similar uh, as possible to the remodeling kinetic. Um, the, this is an enzymatic test showing that uh, uh, 
uh, mineralized collagen is protected, is stabilized, but we need also a cross-linking agent, like for example BDDGA or Ginepine. There are a lot of uh, um, well-tolerated uh, um, cross-linking agent, and we can stabilize the composite. Um, this is the effect, uh, morphological effect of a cross-linking agent. So at the end, the scaffold is characterized by high porosity and highly interconnection. Uh, we can control also the porosity of the cartilaginous layer, which is uh, tailored to be smaller and uh, um, uh, with lower interconnectivity to assure uh, an hypocidic uh, environment to reduce the uh, income of oxygen as is required for differentiation in a chondrocyte like uh, uh, phenotype. Uh, at the end, our um, graded composite uh, was prepared. Uh, this is the, the final morphology, which is a uh, macrostructure, which is uh, very similar to that of the natural uh, osteochondral region. Uh, here you can see some animal test. This is uh, the knee of the horse. And after six months, uh, you can see the follow-up where we can find a very good uh, subchondral bone regeneration and uh, the formation of uh, a continuous cartilaginous layer, layer. And you can see the well um, borderline between natural and artificial uh, cartilaginous layer. Um, these, those are some ship tests uh, in which we compare the, co uh, the um, we have a control without scaffold, uh, composite, uh, biohybrid composite, and biohybrid composite plus chondrocyte. And we have in those uh, last cases very good results. Um, we have uh, columnar and longitudinal disposal of chondrocytes uh, and uh, trabecular bone well organized. Uh, those, uh, uh, this uh, uh, biohybrid composite was uh, uh, industrially developed by Finceramica Faenza and uh, uh, it was uh, brought up to uh, AC Mark. And so we have also clinical case. Uh, this is a trochlea, multiple trochlear lesions and uh, uh, there is a follow-up at six months and one here and uh, uh, the results was uh, uh, really good. One concern is the reinforcement of such a kind of scaffold to be able to repair um, defects uh, more large than focal defect, defects. So we have also um, uh, tried a new uh, development of uh, um, biohybrid scaffold, collagen hydrosapatite biohybrid scaffold reinforced with the cellulose nanofibers produced by bacteria. And uh, this is the blend, and as you can see, this is the composite, the reinforced composite, which is more stable and its uh, uh, degradation is uh, um, as a low, um, lower kinetic, and uh, uh, this is uh, the particular of the mineralized scaffold. We decide also to try to produce the same scaffold with the super paramagnetic ability. Actually, we can uh, introduce into the hydrosapatite lattice uh, uh, many different uh, uh, doping ions uh, since uh, the specific uh, microporosity of the uh, cell of uh, hydrosapatite. So we decide to introduce, uh, to try to introduce iron uh, ions. And uh, since we have two positions of calcium, which are structurally different, we decided to try to introduce into the apatite itself super paramagnetic domain very similar to what uh, uh, you can find in magnetite. So we have to introduce iron 3 plus and iron 2 plus in a specific ratio and with a specific coordination. We succeed in that and we uh, at the end, we are able to produce a uh, uh, iron doped hydrosapatite, minimizing the formation of magnetite at 1% maximum. And uh, the, the iron, uh, the two iron species, 
were introduced in a specific coordination so that we have uh, a magnetization that has very low magnetic external magnetic field, uh, 32 hours at very low, it's uh, around 1 uh, mu grams, which is uh, very good. Uh, this is the biohybrid composite. We nucleated these phases on the collagen, and so we are able to prepare a, uh, a super paramagnetic uh, uh, osteochondral scaffold, which are uh, graded with a graded distribution of iron uh, ions. So the scaffold can have a magnetic uh, gradient and can attract. attract uh, vascular or remodeling, um, sorry, um, bone, uh, gr uh, fact, bone growth factors inside the scaffold itself. This is a, a, an image of the bone regeneration in a, a big defects uh, into the rabbit uh, with a magnet, that is this black line, and as you can see, the bone forms with a highly oriented uh, lamellar structure. This powder is also characterized by incredibly high hyperthermia, so we can develop this phase also for uh, therapeutic um, um, intent. Uh, last uh, two words about uh, a different approach, taking uh, nanostructure from, from nature and trying a top-down approach, which is to use what nature uh, do to, to transform this material into what we need. Uh, bone, um, sorry, wood uh, produced by, na uh, by nature is extremely uh, similar to uh, the structure of bone, and we find um, uh, a, a, bo a, a wood which is a rattan, uh, which is characterized by an um, incredible similarity uh, with bone tissue and uh, characterized by um, channel like structure. Uh, similar to aversion channel and uh, um, large porosity and micro porosity. And uh, uh, this bone was, uh, this is uh, the comparison between uh, the uh, bone tissue and the rattan. Uh, this wood was used uh, to, to produce long um, scaffold, uh, sorry, scaffold for long bone defects, uh, for load-bearing long bone defects. We set up a complex uh, multi-step process, uh, starting from pyrolysis, carburization, oxidation, carbonation, and phosphation, and at the end, uh, do, uh, taking, uh, taking uh, always preserved the morphology uh, and the structure, the microstructure of the uh, starting wood, we succeed in uh, producing uh, hydrosiapatite coming from wood. This hydrosiapatite has been uh, tested in uh, long bond effects, and as you can see here, we have a very good integration. Um, and I would like to thank you and to thank uh, the uh, European project uh, which uh, allow us uh, to, to do all this work. Thank you.